Okay, Jonathan Ashworth is with me here in the studio this morning. Now, what are we going to do about this legislation, proposed legislation? Well, I think this legislation is unworkable. The government are effectively saying to a nurse, a paramedic, a healthcare assistant, that if you exercise your right to industrial action, if you exercise your right to withdraw your labour because your pay is inadequate, then they're going to sack you. They're going to sack a nurse. This is the time when we can see on our television screens the desperate crisis the National Health Service is in with millions on the waiting list, hundreds of thousands waiting beyond a year for treatment, people in trolleys in, on, in corridors in A&E departments because we're so short of staff across the NHS, short of around 100,000 staff. And yet the government's proposal isn't to recruit more staff, isn't to resolve the disputes with fair pay settlements. The government's proposal it's to sack nurses and paramedics. It's a bit oversimplified, Some the government would say, I'm sure. They'd say, no, that's not the case. We just want a basic level of service. We absolutely accept that some people uh, will, will want to strike and, and they will do that. That's their democratic right. But we see in Spain, we see in France that, you know, they do have a minimum level of service if there is a strike. But these uh, regimes don't work in, uh, in other countries. And actually... There was a minimum level of service when nurses striked. Actually, when paramedics took action, I think they were responding to the Category 1 calls, the most serious uh, uh, of call-outs. But if you're a nurse, if you're a paramedic and you withdraw your labour under these government's proposals, the government are saying, we'll sack you. And I just don't think that is a sensible approach when we know our National Health Service is on its knees and people are waiting to get treatment and our A&E departments are totally overwhelmed. I mean, the way in which you resolve this is obviously negotiation, and the negotiations have got to continue in a meaningful way. But why are people, whether it's the health service or the sectors taking industrial action, it's because living standards have collapsed. That is a consequence of 12 years of poor economic growth, failing to make our economy more productive and prosperous. And one of the ways in which you raise living standards, grow your economy, is get more people back to work. And I'm putting forward new thinking, new reforms, new measures today to get more people into jobs because it's good for them, but it grows our economy as well. How do you get people, how do you get more people into jobs? What, what in your opinion, is the government um, doing wrong? You say they're disincentivising work. Well, well, they, they, how well, are you going to fix it? Well, they are, because they've got a, you've got a million people out of work looking for a job, and then you've got hundreds of thousands of people who are out of work for reasons of sickness or perhaps they've taken early retirement, but say they would return to work if given the right support and help yet they're getting no support and help at the moment under the Conservatives. I think that's a waste of their talents, a monumental waste of their talents. So I'm going to shift resources out of Whitehall and into local areas, whether it be Wigan or Bury or, or Leicester, so those areas can design the employment support schemes that are needed to help people with reskilling and re retraining. But I'm also going to tackle the... That's dis not you, though, is it? I mean, well, it's not happening under this government. That's go not reinventing the wheel. Well, this government, it's not happening under this government. They think they're, they're the roadblocks to reforms like that. But there's a second thing I'm going to do. We need to tackle the disincentives in the social security system, which, for, mean for at the moment, for many people, moving into work does not mean they are better off. It's not in their interests. We've got to tackle that, because at the moment, people are trapped. The, there's a barrier stopping them moving into work. So I'm going to reform something called the work capability assessment regime. Yes, it's technical, but the social it's security very, system is technical. Catchy title, isn't well, it? the social security system is complicated and technical, but these are the sorts of reforms that we can introduce which will smooth the journey into work for people who at the moment can't, don't move into work who who say they would want to with the right help. How are we feeling about MPs who've got two jobs? Well, I've always argued that uh, being a Member of Parliament uh, and one's parliamentary duties, whether it's uh, holding the government to account on the front bench or, or representing or, or fighting for different particular issues from the back bench, is a, a full-time job. And I think Parliament needs to come together and, uh, and outlaw some of these uh, second jobs. You'll always have MPs who are things like uh, uh, doctors and need to continue some of that working to maintain their professional qualifications. But I think generally there's got to be a better way of doing yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, looking at yours, I know that you're happy with us to, to highlight it. You've declared £7,360 since 2019. That's a drop in the bucket, isn't it? Um, compared to people like your colleague, David Lammy, £313,000. Keir Starmer had said that uh, he didn't, uh, with notable exceptions, he didn't think that MPs should have second jobs. But he, he won't criticise David Lammy. Well, can I just, in case your viewers um, 
Um, Going back mis to yours. Misunderstand. And I know you're not trying to um, uh, confuse the viewers. I know you're not doing that. But that's not money that's come to me. That's when I've been to a conference abroad and they've paid for the flight. And some of it... I, 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 it's a gift that uh, amounts to... Well, it's, it's, to go to a, well it's to go to a work-related conference. Yeah. Uh, there are gifts in there. I mean, Donations only I mean, for gifts is what is. I mean, there are gifts in there. Leicester City Football Club, I'm the MP for Leicester, and Leicester City Football Club are in my patch. They took me to the FA Cup final when Leicester City beat Chelsea in the FA Cup. So there are gifts in there, all but I don't have second earnings. Yeah, that's I don't have second earnings. Um, as far, you know, if people go into our, our fancy tool, which I'm sure you have as and well. And it's very it good. absolutely illustrates it. And in fact, if we see the second slide, we can just see uh, that that is illustrating exactly... Uh, what you have uh, just been telling us. There you go. You're happy with those figures? Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that how much it was to go to the FA Cup final? Wow. It's a lot. Um, of money, well, that's because you have to. They they put you in the hospitality suite, and you have to, and you obviously have to declare all nice. of that. Okay. What about uh, David Lammy? Let's, let's go back to him. Should he be allowed to earn that sort of money from second jobs? Well, he does a presenting program, so he's you know, and it's a political job to present on the on the television. More than that. Uh, um, but you know. If he was a government minister, he wouldn't be able to do that. But he de everything is declared. Everything is declared. And the reason we know about this is because he's quite rightly declared it all. That's not my question, though. My question is, should be, he be allowed to do second jobs? Because you're saying, if you're an MP, that's the job that you should be doing. Um, yeah, but he's doing... I think I think he's not got a... He's not a sort of working for a bank or something. I think he's got a presenting programme on... Uh, on LBC and I think some of the other is for books and speeches and things like that he's done, which are which is sort of related to his the political work that he does. So that's OK? Well, it's in the rules, yeah. yeah. But is it OK? Well, it's in the rules, so, yeah, it is, yeah. OK. Um, what about Keir Starmer um, saying that uh, MPs... You know, he, he's talking about Dale Vince, for example. Uh, he's one of the biggest donors to Just Stop Oil. Keir Starmer massively criticised what Just Stop Oil were doing. They were uh, closing all the roads, weren't they? Really irritating. He said it was wrong and arrogant. But he's taking money from somebody called Dale Vince, who's also one of the biggest donors to Just Stop Oil. But look at it from the other way. It's look, confusing, though, isn't it? it? Well, 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 actually, no. I think it, it, that sends a clear message that we do not decide our policy positions based on who donates to the Labour Party. You see? I mean, you see what I mean? Because you're pointing to me, how can he be criticising these people who've given us money? Well, actually, that's how it should be, because we make policies in the interests of the country, not in the well, interests of people who he donate. He doesn't support them. He doesn't support Just Stop Oil. He thinks what they were doing was irritating, um, wrong and arrogant, is what he said, to use his exact phraseology. But he's then also taking money from somebody who's massively supporting Just well, if people Stop Oil. So that's don't... confusing at least. Well, no, 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 because if people want to donate to the Labour Party, they presumably are donating because they agree with our... Uh, the policies that I'm putting forward on getting people back to work, yeah. on the policies that uh, Bridget Phillipson is putting forward on childcare, the on the policies that uh, West Streeting is putting forward on the future of the National Health Service. I think that shows you that people cannot buy our policies because you've got Keir Starmer disagreeing with somebody's position who has donated. I mean, I think that's a, a world of difference between the Conservative Party, whose who's financing is so murky, and the suspicion continues to linger not, that people I mean, who donate to the Conservatives... Why do you say it's murky get, when we've illustrated how it's... You because know, you, it's because, they, they, because they, they, there's always suspicions that uh, uh, many of the, uh, the firms who donate to the Tory party somehow have an impact on policy. You've got here an example of us disagreeing with somebody who's donated to our uh, party. Yeah, we tried to trace the money on uh, or follow the money on, on some, of, um, some of the big hitters in the Labour Party, and it was very difficult to try to find out who these companies were that were donating money to some of your big hitters? Well, as I understand it, these are companies who are registered appropriately with uh, the authorities, Companies House and so on, and, and have donated to uh, members of parliament. So those members of parliament can help fund staff in their office, research staff and so on. It's all, it's all within the rules. It's all in transparent. Well, it's that's all what, above That's board. what the Tories would say as well. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, companies can donate to members of parliament, and mem I think members of parliament across all political parties have used these donations to fund staff because we do get some staffing budget from parliament, but there are MPs who, who need more research support and will therefore want to fundraise in order to fund that research support. So we need to look again at the system, is what you're saying? Well, I think... I think well, well, first of all, you know, you, Sky has brought together... And different media. And yeah. media have brought together different databases, and, it's a, and that is a... Tremendous public service. But all this was public, uh, 
publicly available information on different databases and you've brought it together. That's really, really, really useful. But I think people do want the system to be improved. I think we do need to look at, to look at second jobs. If there are differences and uh, question marks about the way in which donations are recorded, and because I'm not honest, by the way, I'm not an expert on all this sort of stuff. No, there are, I, colleagues, there are colleagues in Parliament who are say. really good on this sort of yeah, stuff and really are. understand it. It's not my area of expertise. And but anyway, Coates has done but, an amazing but, piece of work on this front. You know, there will, if there are, if we need to improve the way in which donations are reported and make them more transparent, then of course Parliament should look at that. Of course Parliament should look at second jobs. That's why we've said we want to see more transparency, more integrity in Parliament. We want to resolve the way in which uh, uh, MPs uh, can pursue second jobs and outlaw, uh, outlaw uh, some second jobs, because we think being an MP should be full-time. So all of these things have to, be looked at, have to be looked at. What would you do about Theresa May? Have to be looked at. £2.8 million. Pounds. Woof! Well, Theresa May can come on your programme and... No, but what do you th you're saying, you know, we have to look at it and, and outlaw some aspects of it. Would you outlaw former prime ministers being able well, to earn that sort I, I of money? Well, I think in the end, you probably need... Because they're public servants. You probably need is. to get um, some sort of cross-party style commission, committee of the House to look at all these issues, because there are different issues uh, impacting different members no, of... No, I understand, but my question is, do you think that it is reasonable um, that uh, my viewers this morning would think £2.8 million? It's a lot of money for speeches... For isn't it? I mean, she makes speeches across the world and it's a lot of money. But look, this is why the House needs to, the House and Parliament needs to work on a cross-party basis to come up with a better system. OK. It's great to talk to you. Very complicated, isn't it? It's a very complicated area. You say that, uh, the, that the party and Parliament is looking at it. I know that Chris Bryant's looking at it in more detail as well, isn't he? Um, and we will continue to update our data bank. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Always.